Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Monday, April 22nd, around 9 p.m. Mountain Time, 2024. A cluster of earthquakes shakes Taiwan after a strong one killed 13 earlier this month. Keep calm. It's boom time. Severe storms could produce multiple rounds of hail, wind, and damaging tornadoes in the central U.S. The National Weather Service calls the rare rock hail hailstorm the most damaging in memory. And we do have some more footage coming from a baseball stadium. Take a look at oh this. Oh my goodness, yeah, this is the baseball stadium at Winthrop University in Rock Hill, South Carolina, taking a beating yesterday from a hailstorm. Large hail uh, left some damage in the area and power knocked out to thousands of homes. So now it's kind of appropriate, some would say, that it's in a ball field because we didn't have baseball size hail, Kelly. We had softball size hail. Yes. That there would be you go. four inches in diameter. Kind of hard to tell how big the hail is in this particular video, but there were reports of widespread hail damage. This is in the upstate of South Carolina, mm. not far from Charlotte, North Carolina. So we saw wind, we saw hail. Boy, it, it was a crazy time. Certainly some impressive footage there over at our Twitter feed or at X at Oppenheimer Ranch at Diamond the Dave. We have some more footage today of some of that storm and some of the activity that's, well, quite shredder. Take a look at this. Crazy times indeed, ladies and gentlemen. As we move into the cosmic ray maximum, more hail like this, especially east of the Continental Divide, will be coming down. Critical fire weather conditions continue across the plains. Locally critical fire weather conditions continue for portions of the northern central plains and much of the northern lower Michigan Monday evening. Red flag warnings are currently in effect in the areas in pink, dink, dink. Dry conditions and gusty winds will persist across Southern Colorado Tuesday, which could be our lose day. Fire weather watches and warnings up there as well. What they failed to mention is the freeze warnings for the east from Connecticut all the way south down into North Carolina and Virginia. Take a look at that also. Uh, Eastern Kentucky, portions of Western North Carolina, and maybe even Tennessee. So heed the warnings and bring in those sensitive plants. We'll take a quick look at the GFS model here, and you can see that the threat for severe weather really isn't that significant, in my opinion, until next weekend, according to the GFS model. And then it gets very spicy. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about here. Uh, total snowfall. Holy macaroni. Shut up, Al! Get in your hole! Al Gore says it doesn't snow anymore. But according to the GFS model and people on the ground, plenty of snow downtown Leroy Brown, especially in those higher elevations for the end of April and into May. Here is Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Snow will be moving across the northeast, the northern tier there. And then Thursday into Friday, we start to see some smatterings of high elevation snow in the Rockies, including Colorado, Montana, and Wyoming. And then it gets real Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And there is the weekend. Heavy snow for the high elevations, including the Sierras, the Pacific Northwest, Idaho, Montana, Utah, uh, picking up some big numbers. The biggest numbers should be in eastern Wyoming, in northern Colorado, where we could be seeing 16 to 24 inches of snow in the upper elevations. And let's just run these models through into May, the first week of May, and snow is still hitting the ground. It's looking like the first week of May could be bringing four feet of snow to Alberta if these models hold up. Holy macaroni.
Seismic update there. We can see the 6.1 to hit Huilin City in Taiwan. Now, since then, there have been dozens of aftershocks from this event. Uh, I'm going to bring it in for you here to make it real. Look at this. The, the coast is rumbling in Taiwan. This is after a 7.4 magnitude killed 13 and toppled buildings. So this is got to be nerve-wracking for the people in the same exact region. Worldwide overall, and that could have been triggered potentially by the coronal hole, um, multiple coronal holes that are now facing Earth as we are in a seismic watch, but we will be looking for larger earthquakes in the seven magnitude range. Overall, no other quakes of note except the aftershock in Huilin City in Taiwan. Now, here is the article coming out. A cluster of earthquakes shakes Taiwan after a strong one killed 13 earlier this month. And they're showing you, obviously, a picture of a topple building from that quake. Demolition work is underway at the building collapsed by a powerful earthquake in Huilin City in Taiwan, Saturday, April 6th here in the picture. And unfortunately, a multiplicity of quakes have hit in the last 24 hours. A cluster of quakes struck Taiwan early on Tuesday, the strongest measuring 6.1, according to the USGS. And the good news is that there were no immediate information on any damage or casualties. The bad news is that a large volcanic eruption is in our future. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. And now we see some headlines coming out on how volcanoes shaped our planet and why we need to be ready for the next big eruption. Well... The world should learn from past disasters and prepare for the effects of the future. Inevitable VEI-7 or greater volcanic catastrophes. And according to a wide-reaching book, that is what they're warning about. Similar to what Lee and I have been warning about over at Magnetic Reversal News every weekend. Saturday, noontime, mountain time. Seismic update, Barda Boonga 5.4 yesterday. We reported on that. Activity continues past that at moderate levels. So we're keeping a close eye on that. Liwa Tobi, Laki Laki, to 7,000 feet today. And Raul Ruang volcano, the big boom, the VEI 4 or 5 that happened just a few days ago. Alert status has now been downgraded to level 3. Good news for those people living in the region. Hopefully, they don't move back too quickly. Semaru to 14,000 feet today. Popo to 18,000. Ducono to 9. Santa Huito to 13. Fuego to 14. Sabancay to 25. Semaru, 14,000 feet. Who knew? Now you do. Bartabunga, a new seismic activity occurred beneath the volcano. Yes, we just reported on that. And to finish up the list today, Liwatobi, volcano, a puff to 6,000. Here we are at the Vatnayoko uh, Glacier where Grimsvotten here and Bartabunga here are situated under the ice. Seismicity after the 5.4 is at low levels but continuing in the last 36 hours. So we'll keep a close eye on that for you. Stay tuned for more news. Speaking about news, space weather news, in the last 24 hours we have had some Moderate activity in the M range, and according to ISWA, some of those flares are headed our way, Earth-facing. It's going to take 24 hours to get some of that modeling together in the morning. But before we get there, none of this is uh, catastrophic, maybe low-level G1 geomagnetic storm. It's the coronal holes we want to talk about. So for the next several days, even the next week, we are going to be in these coronal hole streams. So there's going to be enhanced seismic uptick. So we're going to be keeping a close eye on uh, the quake map because we are in a multi-day seismic warning realm. So buckle up, Buttercup. More big earthquakes are coming in the next week, according to science. Now, good news. Voyager 1 is sending data back to Earth for the first time in five months. This is one of the oldest satellites, the furthest away from Earth, and we thought all was lost. But alas, Voyager 1 is now sending data back to Earth for the first time in five months. Voyager 1 is currently 15 billion miles away. Let me repeat that, 15 billion. That's 15,000 million miles away. 
And at 46 years old, the probe has shown multiple quirks and signs of aging in recent years. You think so? Voyager, uh, the latest issue experienced by Voyager 1 first cropped up in November of 2023 when the Flight Data Systems Telemetry Modulation Unit began sending indecipherable repeating patterns of code. Voyager 1's Flight Data System collects information from the spacecraft science instruments and bundles it with engineering data that reflects its current health status. Mission Control on Earth receives that data in binary or a series of ones and zeros, however you want to look at it. But since November, Voyager 1's flight data system has been stuck in a loop. While the probe has continued to relay a steady radio signal to its mission control team on Earth over the past few months, the signal did not carry any usable data. The good news, the mission re uh, team received its first coherent data about the health and status of Voyager 1's engineering systems on April 20th. While the team is still reviewing the information, everything they've seen so far suggests Voyager 1 is healthy, wealthy, and wise, and operating properly. Good news for all those ancient alien space buffs. <laughs> Google builds an AI model that can predict future weather catastrophes, and none of them will be real. The new system, which costs trillions of dollars, uses generative AI to predict weather faster and more cheaply than ever, which will be more inaccurate than ever. Have you seen some of the... Anyway. We're in disbelief. Antarctica is behaving in a way we've never seen before, according to scientists. Can it recover? Now, according to these low IQ people that are obviously getting funding for reasons that are questionable... Antarctic sea ice has been disappearing over the last several summers. Apparently, they didn't get the memo that every summer, all of the sea ice disappears and then reforms in the winter. So they didn't get that memo, but they wrote the article anyway. Now, because of this discovery that is not a discovery at all, climate scientists are wondering whether the ice will ever come back. Yeah, well, it will right now in the winter because... It's going to come back. And in fact, Jack, Antarctica is currently colder than it has been in the last 5,000 years, according to a new paper. So those are the facts. Uh, and the alarmists are just really bad journalists and terrible scientists, in my opinion. Now, the real scientists find about a quarter million invisible nanoplastic particles in a single liter of bottled water, which should make you question your purchases at the store, especially if it's bottled, bottled water. We get our, all of our water from wells or reverse osmosis systems in town so that they are 100% devoid of any of this garbage. You should do the same. And if you want to survive and thrive because everything is about to collapse, including the banks, come join us for your final vacation in Crow Canyon during the Crow Canyon Petroglyph Tour in just about, just over a month. Sunday, May 26, 9 a.m. to dark, we're going to be in one of the most remote regions in West Virginia. Yeah, <laughs> it's New Mexico, kids. I was just checking if you were listening. One of the most epic petroglyph experiences anywhere on the earth is not that hard to get to. You just got to get to Aztec or Farmington or Bloomfield, New Mexico, and we're off to the races. Just a few tickets left. Please gobble them up before they're gone and enjoy a tribe of like-minded people doing some amazing science in the middle of nowhere. If you're also looking to survive and thrive in the future, you need to be planting your own food, learning to fail, and learning to be resilient. It's all about abundance in the future, and you can only do that if you have skills in growing your own food. And you want to do that with heirloom vegetable seeds so that you can save seeds and regrow the products in the future. Each time, every year, it gets better and better due to the open pollination process and the climate in your region. It's called a land race. 
Our affiliate, the Alliance of Native Seed Keepers, just added another dozen varieties for spring. Dang, dang, as we rapidly head towards summer. What a bummer. You need to get your seeds in the ground now. 212 varieties of vegetables in stock and over 100 varieties of herbs and flowers, all for $2 per pack. If you add coupon code ORP2024, get an additional 10% off. And if your total is above 25 bucks, it's free shipping. It's literally free seeds, free self-reliance, free sustainability, and well, hedge your, hedge your bets and give yourself a little peace of mind and stock up on the seeds. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please share this video as we are shadow banned. We need your help to grow. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do and watch all of our podcasts in one place, <coughs> one place, commercial free. The most important thing is be safe because we love you. And that is a boom. Mm -hmm.